Oh, yeah, yeah. We have a very young audience also. Yeah, welcome all. Uh, we'll be talking about non-invasive biomarkers in retinal disorders. I'm the chief instructor. I'm Dr. Rajesh Sahai. And with me, with me is Dr. Naresh Babu, Dr. George, Dr. Abhijit. And we'll be missing Dr. Sarvanan. Dr. Sarvanan's uh, talk will be partly taken over by George. So as retina specialists, we want to have a panoramic 360 degree view, see the different layers of retina and choroid, the vascular details, specifically see individual cells, normal or diseased, and then make a diagnosis of the disease, plan treatment, follow up, and we want it to be done automatically uh, so that we can be at peace all the time. So to, to have all this, we have different devices. There are wide field fundus camera, there is an optical coherence tomograph, optical coherence tomograph, angiogram, octa. Then there are adaptive optics imaging. And, oh, and to integrate everything, all the information together, we have artificial intelligence in all these machines. And these devices identify consistent specific changes in the tissue known as biomarkers. These are indispensable tools contributing to improve disease management, patient care, and biomedical research. The clinical utility is in the diagnosis of the disease, monitoring disease progression, guiding treatment decisions, treatment selection and monitoring, predicting visual prognosis, and, so, and uh, the drug development clinical trials. But there are challenges as well, like there are interpretation variability, which we saw in the uh, last IC and ex access to imaging technologies, potential false positive and negatives, and of course the cost considerations. In future, there will be many more advancements in imaging, integration of artificial intelligence, researches on novel biomarkers, and potential impact on clinical practice. So as I said, our speakers are, uh, Dr. we'll be missing Dr. Sarvanan, then Dr. Naresh Babu, Abhijit, and Dr. George Maniath. All of us are trained at Arvindai Hospitals. We'll be talking about non-invasive biomarkers in different retinal diseases and sharing experiences in evolution and evaluation and interpretations. My topic is non-invasive biomarkers in retinal vein occlusions and macular telangiectasia. We all know that CRVO is embolic obstruction in the central retinal vein at the cribriform plate. Stasis and engorgement of venules leading to capillary fragility, exudation, ischemia, and sometimes physiological obstruction of celoretinal artery obstruction. With chronicity, shunt vessels and neovascularizations develop. The biomarkers, the non-invasive biomarkers, are the fundus photo where we see the disc edema, retinal hemorrhages, venous engorgement, cotumel spots, celoretinal artery occlusions. In the wide field, additionally, we get the perfusion, idea of the perfusion in the periphery. So in the OCT, we see retinal thickness. The volumetric analysis gives us the idea that how much is the uh, you know, edema and how it resolves on treatment. So we assess the retinal thickness, macular edema, intraretinal hemorrhages. There is something called drill, derangement of retinal inner layers, where there is an inability to recognize individual boundaries between ganglion cells, inner plexiform, inner nuclear, and outer plexiform layers, as I see in the first photograph. And there is another uh, important finding, that is PAM. Uh, that, that is the inner nuclear layer hyperreflective band. This represents hypoperfusion, and this can impair vision in the absence of CNE. So this is another interesting finding in uh, CRVOs, the end phase uh, the, the a, a photograph shows, demonstrates multifocal hyperreflective plaque-like lesions at the level of the inner nuclear layer, consistent with PAM, as I said. And the end phase visualization through the mid retina shows a fern-like pattern of perivenular hyperactivity. A follow-up horizontal B scan of the same demonstrate attenuation of the uh, inner nuclear layer in the area of previously hyperreflective PAM lesions. The end phase visualization through the mid retina shows significant narrowing of the PAM lesions. Uh, these are important uh, OCT findings. And the autofluorescence also shows sometimes these fern like hypofluorescence in the uh, CRVO cases. 
The OCTA uh, shows us the va uh, vascular uh, abnormalities in any of the layers of the retina, and these could be venous filling defect delays, capillary non-perfusion in different layers, and irregular foveal avascular zone and neovascularizations. The BRVO is thrombotic obstruction at the common sheet of arteriovenous crossings, leading to ischemic maculopathy, CME, collaterals, and neovascularization. These are the wide field photographs of the BRVO. The OCT, of course, shows the CME, the hemorrhage, subretinal fluid, interretinal hyperreflectivity, ellipsoid zone, and ELM abnormalities in long standing BRBOs. We see success like lesions, and uh, we have some deposits here. There is a hemorrhage which is cast in shadow here. So, all these to be interpreted, these are important biomarkers to identify the process of the disease and uh, how it affects the final outcome. Uh, the OCTA shows us the disruption of the perifoveal vascular complex. We can see the telangiectasia here and neovascularization if it develops anywhere. Shows decreased perfusion in both superficial and deep capillary plexus. So coming to MACTEL type 2, this was earlier known as idiopathic parafoveal telangiectasia type 2, type 1 being the Coats disease, and bilateral disease of unknown cause alteration of macular capillary network and progressive cell death, typically manifest temporal to the fovea, and there is loss of macular pigment, accumulation of pigment clumps in retinal layers, retinal and choroid neovascularization. The fundus photo shows this uh, loss of retinal transparency in the parafoveal region, and the, the other photograph shows the clump of pigment. The autofluorescence, uh, this is a first photograph, is a non, this is a normal photograph of a retina in uh, AF. And here you can see this uh, normal foveal hypofluorescence is lost. And we have some uh, these uh, hypofluorescent areas as well. So this is loss of hypofluorescent center on blue light fluorescent autofluorescence. Uh, autofluorescence. The, there is temporal enlargement of foveal pit with disparate temporal versus nasal thinning. Temporal is more thin, it's thinner than the nasal side. And there develops cavities like this, which goes on increasing with time. And there is disruption of the photoreceptor ISOS junction or the ellipsoid zone. And uh, in the morning, in one of the sessions, I saw that uh, people have identified some uh, initial changes which will ultimately lead to uh, neovascularization, that is double layer sign, that has also been identified in OCT photographs of uh, MACTEL2. In the octa, we will see obliteration of FAZ and choroidal neovascular membranes. In conclusion, let me tell you that OCT is responsible for a paradigm shift in retinal disease diagnosis and management. Newer devices identify newer biomarkers. Access to these could be limited by the cost. The overall understanding of the disease and response to treatment is evolving. And this makes us life, uh, our lives very difficult and will be faced in uh, you know, challenges in remembering fine details in future and need more of arti artificial intelligence in future. Thank you very much. <laughs>